Today we're going to be completing our population monitoring study, which is a longitudinal study that our lab has been doing for the past 20 years. And we're here this summer setting traps at various locations around Hamilton Harbour to monitor the population of round goby in Hamilton Harbour. It's an invasive species here, um, and they're invasive because they've been hitchhiking on boats uh, from the Black and Caspian Seas in Europe, and uh, they're now out competing many of our native species. Ground goby like primarily eat like small insects, zoo and phytoplankton, as well as the eggs of many species of fish, as well as other small fish occasionally. So, generally speaking, they'll outcompete a lot of fish similar to their size, so other species of minnows and whatnot. Yeah, 20 years ago is about when they came, um, and they've been increasingly more prolific since, especially in sort of more highly contaminated areas. Because these ground gobies are extremely prolific and very resilient towards uh, pollution, uh, they tend to be able to survive even when native species cannot. They also provide food for like larger species, but since they're very small and they're bottom feeders, they'll accumulate a lot of pollution and from the sediments much faster than they would from other fish, such as minnows, for example. And so when they accumulate those extra toxins, they pass them on faster through the, um, the food chain than other fish would. For our actual study, we're taking a sample of the full population of the gobies. We set out traps, and um, in these specific locations, we sort of compare over the years if their catch rates have been higher or lower, and then we dissect them. And so when we're dissecting, we're looking at a couple of major um, organs. We're most interested in their gonads and their liver. The gonads help us <laughs> sort of uh, estimate how well their uh, reproductive tactics are working, and this might change over the years. And also for the liver, we're kind of looking at how the pollution has affected um, that sort of part of their um, body system. Currently, there's PhD students and graduate students who are doing a deep dive into the data um, and they'll be sharing all of that information with Environment and Climate Change Canada as well as the Department of Oceans and Fisheries. And right now this analysis is under review right now and so that will be out I think in the next year. But some current understandings that we have are that um, the persistence of round goby and like especially the contaminated waters of Hamilton, they will continue to persist in high quantities and we can't see that ending anytime soon. And as far as we know, there's no great way to control their population. The best thing that we can do currently is just prevent them from spreading to new lakes. So as I said before, they've infiltrated all of the Great Lakes, but that doesn't mean that they have to infiltrate the smaller rivers and lakes surrounding. So it means that we should all still be responsible and make sure that we're not introducing invasive species into new waters.